Mother... That's what the MTHFR gene is often referred to. Mother, you get it. And it's actually a pretty good abbreviation because when you start to do a little research into what it is and how it can affect your health, the common reaction is mother. Yeah. Now part of the reason is because it can actually get pretty complicated and contribute to the development and or severity of a lot of different conditions, which we have discussed in the past and we will discuss in the future. So make sure you hit slam, touch, tap, push that subscribe button so that you can get notified when we post new videos. Today's video is not about how and why the MTHFR could be part of your health or lack thereof, but today is about how you can find out if you're MTHFR positive. Now there's two main variants of MTHFR or what's called an allele. So a C677T and a 18298 sorry, 1298C variant. Each one has three different possibilities for a total of nine different variations. I'll list them below in the description and on our blog page, um, and each one, or depending on which one or combination of ones you have, will change your potential ability for methylation, your ability to detox, make neurotransmitters, etc. So what are your options to find out if you have those genetics? There are actually quite a few different options, and one of the easiest and sometimes cheapest options is actually through 23andMe, which we'll go over today. Another option is Ancestry.com, but before you run out and go use those services, please keep in mind there are potential risks and downsides to getting this done. Now here are just a few of those to think about. Number one, ignorance is bliss, or at least it can be. Sometimes the information that you can find out can be scary, i.e. finding out you have the genes for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, macular degeneration, etc. Now this doesn't mean you'll for sure get those things, and I think it's helpful because now you know you can do something about it, but some people don't want to know. Right? A good saying in functional medicine and genetics loads the gun, environment pulls the trigger. And I have had patients that I needed to know the information, but they didn't want to know. So we would find out, and they specifically told them not to tell them, but I could use that information to further their health. To each their own, I suppose. Number two, hacking. That's a threat with anything online these days. Number three, it's not medical. Being that the services through 23andMe, Ancestry.com, and other consumer genetic sites are not considered medical, it does mean that the government, law enforcement, and whoever else wants to, I suppose, can have access to that for whatever reason may be necessary. Now, those companies can also sell your data. A lot of people don't like this. I'm not a huge fan. Had I known this, I probably wouldn't have done it. But being that they already have my fingerprints, I don't know, maybe it didn't make a difference or not. Who knows? So, here's a couple different workarounds. Number one, don't do it. Number two, do it, but use a fake name and email address. Now, if they really wanted to, they could find out who you were. They could link you through your family members that have done it and whatever else, but it's going to take a whole lot more work to do it. <clears throat> Number three, do it, but use a medical version of it, whether it's Genova or Doctors Data or LabCorp or Quest or whoever. Now they can't have access to it. The next concern to think about is the profit or financial status of the company. The company can decide to use and or sell your data to whomever they deem necessary or would like to. As an example, 2018, GlaxoSmithKline teamed up with 23andMe to the tune of $300 million, yes, 300, to have exclusive rights to their data to create their own drugs. And I recently heard, but have not been able to confirm, that recently 23andMe sold the information to a few different companies in China. So, now that you're a little bit more informed, let's take a look at how you can use 23andMe to see if you are MTHFR positive. Here we go. So when we get to the first page here, let's go over a couple things. Because when you first go into 23andMe, if you've not had this done, 
you have a couple uh, different options. Now, for most of my patients, I usually recommend do the more expensive one. It's only a little bit more and you'll get more information from it. And that's the Health and Ancestry Service. Now, that's usually what we're gonna use to find out if you're MTHFR positive. Now, when we show you where to look at for uh, finding if you're MTHFR positive here, uh, we're gonna be using my account and we did this one. Now the Ancestry, kind of the more basic one on this, um, I do believe I've used a couple of these where I was able to find out, uh, but I can't be for sure. So 99 bucks for this one. And then if we go back, the Anse Health and Ancestry one, 129, so 30, 29 more dollars, 30 bucks. Do the more expensive one. Now let's go over to after you get the test done, right? You're gonna do a swab, you're gonna send it out, they're gonna get all your information, you'll kind of find out all kinds of kind of neat things, but some of it is really just kind of like it doesn't mean anything. It's just kind of like uh fun information, I guess. You know, you have uh the genes that you're more likely to have dimples, like uh I don't know how that's helpful for you, but okay, that's kind of cool. Now, so what you're gonna do is for most, if you've had your account for a while, sometimes you need to be able to register to see your raw data. Now, most of the newer ones, you don't need to, and you can already do it. So what you do is you go over to your account and you go down to browse raw data. Now, on ancestry.com, it's totally different. You have to download it. You have to put it into a file. You have to search it, all this stuff. So it's a little bit more complicated and we'll go over that. But 23andMe does a really good job. So here's what you're gonna be looking at, right? So you have this, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna just type in MTHFR, right? And it's gonna bring up this big list of all these different ones. Now there's two particular ones you're gonna be looking for. So there's the uh, RS1801133, which is the C677T allele, and there's three different versions. There's an AA, an AG, and a GG. So let's look at that one first. So we're looking for 180, uh, that's the other one, 33. Three. So this one right here. So I have the AG alleles. So I have one variant of the first SNP. So according to the research and the papers and the mother effer gurus, <laughs> Uh, my methylation uh, ability is potentially reduced about 40%. Now, that's a pretty significant amount. Now, um, there's things that you can do to kind of manipulate this and kind of address it. But Now, the other one that we're going to be looking for is kind of the lesser of these ones, is this RS1801131. And of this one, I also have one allele. So I kind of have the middle ground of both of these. So let me show you something here and you can see what I'm just, and this will be in the documents and in the description. So here's the two ones that you're looking for, right? You want to look for this one, which is this allele. And then this is the worst one. This is the middle ground. This is the normal, normal. Now when I say normal, it's all relative because about 40% of the population has an MTHFR gene. So there's a lot of variation there. And then the other one, the second one, is the 1801131, and that's the A1298C. Now again, you're looking at three different ones. This is the worst one, this is the middle ground, and then this is the normal one. So there you have it. There's the information on how to use 23andMe if you are MTHFR positive, and use that to help better your life and your health. If you need, need any help, if you're looking for a good functional medicine doctor, give us a call. Um, we're always here to help you and uh, help you on your journey to better life and better quality of life. I'm Dr. Craig Martinson. Be healthy, be happy. See you next time.